click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Hi everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to move it up a gear now and I'm going to show you how you can create a macro that's a little bit more complex and involves numerous different steps in order to reformat this entire table of data. Now before we get to doing that I just want to show you something that's super important when you're working with macro files in Excel. You can see currently at the top, I have this yellow bar, which is basically Excel telling me that I can't save my file because I need to save it as a different file type. And you'll find this when you start recording macros and working with macros in Excel. The next time you come to save your file, it's going to ask you to save it as a macro enabled file type. So as we all know, by default, when you create a workbook in Excel, the file extension is .xlsx. And if you look up in my title bar at the top, you can see that's what I currently have this workbook saved as. But I've played around with this file a little bit. I've just tried to resave it. And now it's telling me that I need to save it as a macro enabled file type. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Let's click save as. This is the folder I want to save it into, but I need to change my file type because I need to save this as a .xlsm file. So I'm going to select that file extension click on save. My warning message has now disappeared. And if you look in the title bar, you can see I now have that new file extension, which basically tells people that this is a macro enabled workbook. This also means that if you were to send this workbook to somebody else, when they open it, depending on their settings in Excel, a lot of the time people will have their Excel settings to warn them when they're opening a macro enabled file type, because there are some macros that can contain malicious computer code that can cause damage to your system. So just be aware of that when you're either receiving files that contain macros, make sure you trust the source prior to opening them. Now, with all that said, let's get on to our task for this lesson. We've already seen how to record a couple of basic macros. So now I'm going to show you something a little bit more complex and it works along the same principle. We're going to be using the same method to record our macros, but we're just going to be doing a lot more steps to tidy up this data. And you can see on the right hand side, I just have a list of instructions as to the different steps that I want to do with this data. And I would recommend you writing out the steps you want to take, because what you'll find is if you want to record a particularly complex macro that has lots of different steps, you don't want to be getting it wrong halfway through recording the macro or forgetting what step comes next. Sometimes it's quite helpful to write it out so that you have something to refer to as you're recording. So let's take a look at exactly what I want to do here. The first thing I'm going to get the macro to do is split up the customer name into two columns. So where we have customer name just here, I basically want to insert another column and then I want to have this one called first name and the new column called last name. And I want to split up the customer name so that we have their first name in column A and their last name in column B. The next thing I want to do is remove the three zeros from the order number. So if you look at all of these order numbers, the three zeros are kind of a bit unnecessary because they're the same for all of the order numbers. I'm going to make this a bit shorter by removing those and just leaving me with the number that's different. The third thing I'm going to do to this data is I'm going to go in and remove all of the hyperlinks from these customer email addresses. And then I'm going to only show the last four digits of the credit card number. So here we have the customer's full credit card number. And actually all I want to display in this report is the last four digits. And then I want to have some asterisks where the rest of the numbers are. And then the final step I want to take here is I then want to just auto fit the entire table. So we've got quite a lot to do. The final thing I would advise you to do before you start running complex macros is create a backup copy of your worksheet. So I'm going to create a copy of this complex macro worksheet simply by holding down my control key, clicking and dragging. And you can see it says complex macro two. And I'm going to just rename this to uh, let's just call this test. Now, the reason why I recommend that you take a backup is that macros are very hard to reverse. So if you run your macro and it goes a little bit wrong or you haven't got it quite right, you can't click the undo button or do control Z to back out of it. You're kind of stuck with the result. So I would always create a backup copy 
run the macro and then if the macro is run correctly I can delete the backup copy if not if not then I can reinstate the original fairly easily and I haven't lost anything so let's now record our macro now I'm going to click where I want the macro to start so I'm going to click somewhere in column A and in this case I do want to use relative references so I'm going to make sure that I have that button turned on as well so let's jump up to record macro I'm going to give my macro a name so we're going to call this reformat underscore customer table and I'm going to give this a shortcut key of control shift and T I'm going to store the macro in this workbook only and at the moment I'm not going to give it a description just to save a little bit of time so let's click on OK I'm now recording my macro so let's start running through our different steps the first thing I want to do is split up the customer name into two columns first name and last name so I'm going to insert a column and then I'm going to use the text to functions feature in Excel which you'll find on the data tab in order to break up this customer name so let's say text to columns it's a delimited file type and what delimiter do I have separating the first name from the last name? Well, it's a space, which I have selected just here. And you can see just below how that's going to break up that name, which is perfect. Click on Finish, and there we go. So now I'm just going to change these headings. So the next thing I want to do is remove the three zeros from the order number. And to do this, I'm going to use a feature in Excel called Flash Fill. So this is going to involve me inserting yet another column and flash fill is great You basically just tell it what you want to pull out of this string of characters and for me that is one two three four five And then if you jump up to the data tab into the data tools group We have a flash fill button which is going to fill down the rest I can then use control shift down to copy those and paste over the top of those order numbers and then delete out that column that I no longer need. The next thing I want to do is to remove the hyperlinks from these email addresses. So that's a simple case of selecting them all, right click and remove hyperlinks. And then finally, I want to only show the last four digits of the credit card number. And I want the rest of these numbers to show in asterisks. So in order to do this, I need to use the write text function and also a little bit of custom formatting. So I'm going to do all of my working out in column G and then we're going to delete column G afterwards. So to do this, all I need to do is say equals and then in quote marks, I'm going to put four asterisks dash dash close my quote marks I'm going to put an ampersand sign which means I want to join it with the result of the right function and the right function allows us to specify how many characters from the right we want to pull out of this credit card number so I want the last four numbers so I'm going to select the cell comma the number of characters is four close the bracket, hit enter, and there I have the correct format. So now I can double click to copy this down. I'm gonna copy, and then I'm just gonna paste the values over the top of the data that's already there in column F, and then delete out what I don't need. Now the final thing I want to do here is I want to auto fit the entire table. So let's select everything, up to the home tab, into the cells group, and I want to say auto fit column width and there we go I'm ready to stop my macro now where do I want my cursor to end up well I'm just going to put it back in cell A1 let's jump up to developer and stop recording so we've recorded a fairly complex macro there with multiple different steps using all different kinds of techniques in Excel so what I'm going to do now is test out this macro see if it works so I've just unhidden the copy of the worksheet that I took and we're now going to test out our macro. So let's click somewhere in this table. I'm going to jump up to my macros button. There is my macro and fingers crossed, let's see what happens. Let's click run. And would you look at that? It has executed it perfectly and I've saved myself so much time. Imagine if you had to do that every time you receive some data from a client or maybe a different department. You've probably saved yourself a good 10 minutes there simply by setting it up as a macro. 
And because we've recorded this using relative references, it doesn't matter where this table of data is located, I can run it in any part of the worksheet. So the final thing I want to show you here is just how to add a user-friendly button, which you can click on to run the macro. And this is particularly useful if you're going to send this worksheet to somebody else who maybe isn't that familiar with how to run macros. It makes it super simple for them to understand and they can just execute the macro with one click of a button. Now you can assign macros to shapes. So if you want to go into insert and just draw a shape and assign a macro to that, you can. But I'm going to do mine from the developer ribbon because underneath the insert dropdown, we have some form controls and one of them is a button. So let's click it and I'm going to draw a button at the top here. And you'll see when I let go, immediately it asks me to assign my macro to the button. And it's going to show me any macros that I have in this workbook. I only have one at the moment, so let's select it and click on OK. I'm now going to right click on the button and edit the text and just give this button a more meaningful name. So let's call this reformat customer table. So now if I want to execute that macro, I can simply click on my button. So let's test it out and see if it works. And there we go, like magic, everything has been done. Now this is quite a complex macro with lots of different steps, including lots of different Excel functionality. So we've probably saved ourselves about 10 or 15 minutes of fiddling around simply by creating a macro. And if this was something I had to do daily, weekly, or on a fairly regular basis, that's gonna save me a lot of time. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.